find my notes. We do not have, we only have one nectar seeking bat here. And the rest of them are all insect eaters, which makes it easy. If you want to make a lot of bats happy, then you plant things that beneficial insects will come to. And you can always, if you really want to see some bats around your place, leave a light on outside at night. Just leave one, you know, it doesn't have to be real bright, but leave one. You've probably done, or your kids have maybe done uh, insect collections. And, oh my gosh, you know, you see all of the, you do most of your insect collection from what's buzzing around that light at night. Well, those are what the bats are drawn to because they're insect eaters. So that's a great thing. Um, the beneficial insects are also really, really good to have. And baccarus is one of the best things. Um, if you have a slope, especially a slope that you don't want to have to pool with and you don't want to have to work with it, you just want it to be green, then baccarus, the coyote bush, is a very great plant to plant on that. It has small, crispy leaves and which one is it here? This is it. Yeah, here we go. Pigeon Point. Um, this is it. And you can see it's bright green, small leaves, kind of crispy. I see a lot of butterflies starting around this too, as well as beneficial insects. So this is kind of one of the one plant does all. And it makes a great spreading plant to cover on a slope. It, re it really it's does well on a slope. Some of these are so fragrant that I really want you to smell them. Just take a tiny little piece here. This is Monardella, one of the coyote mints, and I just love it. It makes a nice round bush that kind of sprawls around, and mine is actually after 10 or 11 years in this garden. It's like four or five feet wide, and it's supposed to stay like three by three, but I never prune anything. How do if you I spell did, M O N A R D E L L A. So we have a number of them. They're right next to the roundhouse. Yeah, Monardella. Um, the one that I like the best for fragrance is Velosa. It has kind of bigger leaves than this, and it's just, so I encourage you to go over there, and when nobody's looking, do this. It smells wonderful. I don't know how you're going to stay out of it once you've done that. I brought in something else that smells good that I'm going to pass around too. This is a grape scented sage. Uh -huh. And it's just absolutely marvelous. So here, try this. Just, just kind of pinch it a little and then sniff your fingers. And it's just got this wonderful, wonderful scent. And this is going to bring in... Uh, <laughs> isn't that great to be able... There aren't too many of them over there. And I'll tell you if you want to go grab one. Um, there at the start of the area that goes towards the southwestern plants or the Baja plants and it's nice to be able to get one in a four inch size, you know. It should take off beautifully and do this is marvelous. And this is a good one for bringing in um, beneficial insects as well as bees. This has a pretty little pinky red flower. And it's real easy to grow. If you've never grown very many of the natives before, this one might be a good one to try. Um, Arabolus usually adapts really well. It's also known as chloroplox, so it does get a cute little flower on it. Then this one is in Celia. This is, see, I cheated. It's from another plant. Oh. Okay, because uh, they're not blooming in the nursery. They look like this in the nursery. If you want to see one in full bloom, just walk, like we would paint your plants, just walk out towards the parking lot. And to your left, you will see a low-growing bush that's just covered with yellow daisies, and that's this, Encelia, E-N-C-E-L-I-A. -E now, Encelia, you do cut back for a little while in the fall. You'll know when, because it looks wretched and ratty, you know. <laughs> um, right at the end of the fall, and you just cut it back, and then it just comes back like gangbusters. Right now, mine is back. I had cut it real hard, and because um, I didn't cut it much last year. I don't do that the way I'm supposed to. So I cut it real hard this year, and it's already like this, and it's already blooming. So it, it comes back early and well. This is a type of lozenge that I've never seen before. Uh, lozenge is L-E-S-S-I-N-G-I-A. And this will get a flower, a little lavender flower, that's at kind of like an aster, 
Here's an astroflower. So it's kind of like this. I think this is really an attractive plant. This is supposed to get three feet by three feet, which means it's probably better than the lysinja I'm growing in my yard, which they don't happen to have for sale, so we don't care. <laughs> so this one looks good. And butterflies love this. Butterflies love asters. They really do. And so do bees. And so do some other beneficial insects. So aster flowers, which look like this, are great choices for a butterfly garden and very easy to grow. This is what it will look like over there in the nursery. He pulled this one, even though it, it doesn't look that good as a plant, because <laughs> it had the flower on it, so you can see. This is what the plant looks like when you buy it in the nursery. And what this does is, it's really nice, it's low growing, and it spreads. This is Aster, um, I think this one is the Chimalensis. Yeah, it's a Ridgeron. Okay, the botanic name is a Ridgeron. It's a really neat plant. This is the only host plant for the Hermes Hopper butterfly, which is soon to go on the endangered species. Northern California should have a Toyon in it. Toyon is Heteromeles arbutifolia. It is a wonderful small tree or a really big bush. Um, <coughs> How tall is yours? Um, this will get to be about 18 feet tall and probably the way I prove mine, it's wider than it is tall. At home it's about 18 feet now after almost 11 years and it's probably at least 20 feet wide. My eagles fail. There's a case and there's another small one I believe. Coffee berries are nice because they will tolerate more shade than a lot of plants will in your garden. And they're really good because they make a berry that the birds love. They're kind of slow growing, but like Eve Case has, where this is a brown, kind of reddish, Eve Case has a very redder uh, stem look to it. And then you get, this is very green. Sometimes um, when you see these mature, they're a greater look to the leaves. And so it looks really attractive against the reddish stems. So the regular coffee berry will get to be maybe 10, 10 to 12 feet maybe, and brings in lots of birds. And it's great for an area that's like between sun and shade, where you're trying to figure out, well, which would this be? They should have Cleveland sage for sure. And then this might be number three. This is Galvesia firecracker. Galvesia firecracker. 